Now for 23.3, the ocean basin. Our objectives describe the features of the ocean basin and then explain how ocean basin features change over time. There's our vocabulary list and many of them are just features that you'll see on the ocean basin. Now the ocean basin's topography varies widely and includes features such as the abyssal plains and hills, deep sea trenches and mid-ocean ridges. Looking at, the, at this diagram, can you, can you find a trench? Can you find a mid-ocean ridge? Can you locate continental shelf, continental slope, continental rise, and abyssal plains and hills? Why don't you try that out right now? Just point to it or try to find each one of those on this map. Now the ocean basin has a wide range of topographical features. Natural forces change these features over time. The abyssal plain is the flattest of all Earth's surface areas. They are composed of sediments, most of which come from the continents and can be more than one kilometer thick in some areas. The abyssal hills are small rolling hills, often occurring in groups next to ocean ridge systems. So if we look at a cross section, we can see that subducting oceanic crust, we see the continental crust, we see an accretionary wedge, now that accretionary wedge is a buildup of sediment that's located near a deep ocean trench. Now the deep ocean trenches are part of the world's oceans and the deepest part is called the Mariana Trench. This lies in the Pacific Ocean, ocean just east of the Philippines and it's a very fast moving Pacific plate that subducts underneath the Philippine plate. Now the deepest spot along the trench was founded in 1951 by the sh Navy ship called Challenger. So it's called the Challenger Deep for the deepest place on Earth. It's nearly 11 kilometers to the bottom, a depth that would entirely submerge Mount Everest and leave almost two kilometers of water above it. Now a U.S. Navy mini submarine reached the bottom of the trench in 1960 and in 1995 a Japanese probe made the most accurate measurement of its depth. Now adjacent to it to the trench lies a volcanic island arc known as the Mariana Islands. On the abyssal plain we also have what are called seamounts and guyouts, which I'll touch on here in a little bit. We have the mid-ocean ridge, the rift, called the rift valley in between the, mid the ridges of the mid-ocean ridge, and then we also have fracture zones. Now deep sea trenches are long, narrow, steep-sided troughs that run parallel to continental margins or to volcanic island chains called island arcs. Now deep sea trenches are common sites of earthquakes and volcanic activity. Mid-ocean ridges are not seamless. Hundreds of transformed faults break them into separate pieces. The transformed faults make up fracture zones. Some fracture zones may form high submarine cliffs and others may extend across an entire ocean basin. Now, sea mounts are volcanic cone mountains that peak high above the ocean floor, and guyouts are sea mounts that have had their peaks worn down by wave action, so they have a flat top. Coral reefs can form around volcanic islands. As the island sinks with the ocean crust, rings of coral are left behind which continue to grow. These form barrier reefs and ring-shaped coral islands called coral atolls. So you see the difference between a barrier reef barrier reef still has that crust sticking up in, in the center, whereas an atoll, it has sunk underneath the surface of the ocean. That's it for 23.3. Next up is 23.4.